Let's have a look at how to create a combined column and line chart. Normally when we um, create a chart, we would select the data, run the chart wizard. Notice I picked up the titles there, but don't include the totals. Including the totals just obscures the focus of the data. Run the chart wizard. Choose the style of chart that we want. I'm just going to do a quick chart by clicking finish because you should already know how to create charts. If any of this is totally new to you, go back and have a look at my videos on how to create basic charts. So I'm just going to click finish. There's the chart. Just make that a bit bigger for you. And that's how we've created charts in the past. There's nothing wrong with that as a basis, but usually only when you are working with one set of data, not two as I have been doing there. Because if you think about it, a column chart or a bar chart compares sets of data. Well, you wouldn't really compare the number of houses sold against the average house price. They're not two, they're not the same. So you wouldn't want to compare them. So this chart actually tells you nothing. It, it, it doesn't really make a lot of sense. So I'll just delete that and show you how we can make the chart more meaningful by having two charts superimposed on one. We still select the data in the normal way. We run the chart wizard. Now instead of choosing a standard chart type, we choose a custom type. There's lots of different charts for you to have a look at. Always have a look at the preview sample and this information down here to get an idea of what the chart is about. There's lots of different charts there. The ones I'm interested in, a bit further down, is the line and column and the line, column and two axes. These are basically the same chart. And it's the ones we want to use. It allows us to put a line chart and a column chart on the same chart. Now, these two options are really identical. Um, I'll explain the difference as we go through. I'm going to choose a column, line column, without the two axes, because as we go through the wizard, we can switch that feature on and off. So line column, click on next. We already had the data selected, so there's nothing for us to do here. Always worth checking whether the chart is better with your series in rows or columns. And then carry on through the wizard. So here's our chart options dialog box. Remember I said about the two axes? Well, that's simply this tick box at the bottom of here. But I'll come back to that in a second. We'll start with titles. Give a chart our titles, house sales. The X category is the category that goes across the chart. X is a cross. That's how I always remember it. That's the week. The Y value axis, this Y is going up the left hand side. And that is for us going to be something that we need to think about and i'll show you why at the moment we've got the scale of 0 to 400 and it's picking that up from the data of the highest values and that's the average house price which goes up to around 370. so that's why it's picked 0 to 400. but if i go into the next tab and switch on our secondary axis i want a secondary y axis what happens then is it creates another axis for us. And those two different axes are to plot the two different sets of data. So the one now up the left hand side is not 250. That is actually to plot the number of houses sold. You can see that goes up to about 200, 210. The one on the right hand side, not to 400, is to pick up the average house prices. So we're plotting the same data, but we've got a different scale for each one. So now I can come back to my titles. 
and know that the first y-axis on the left hand side is actually the number sold. My secondary y-axis down the right hand side is the average price. Always use this little preview window to see how things are coming along. If you just pause a second after doing any typing or changing, it's reflected in this window. So we've now got two axes labelled. On the axes tab, we've ticked to say that we want that second axis. And we can carry on then through the rest of the chart options, making the choices that you want to make. I should already know what all these options are, if not go back and look at the videos, but very briefly, grid lines, switches on, the chart paper effect if you will. The legend is the key that explains what things are, we can switch that on and off, or put it to a different part of the chart. Data labels, we can click those on or not. It's just having a look to see if it makes sense or helps the, the chart at all. It's putting the values on there and the data table, whether or not to show that. So you make your choices, carry on through the wizard, finish. There's my chart, let's make that a bit bigger, which is a combined column and line chart that now makes sense because the number of houses being sold is plotted as a column chart with the axes of 0 to 250 and the average price sold is plotted as a line chart with a scale of 0 to 400. So that is combined column and line charts simply running the chart wizard and choosing custom types. Choose your line or column and progress through the wizard and you get a combined chart.